edition of Mythbusters. You know what? I once heard the idea that if you have a pendulum suspended from the ceiling and you hold it up to your face and you just let go and stand perfectly still, the pendulum will swing away and come back and hit you in the face. Wow. That sounds like an idea we need to test. All right. Let's build a model okay. and test it on buds. All right, so this is the model we've set up. And this is what a pendulum is. In case you didn't know, a pendulum is when you have a weight suspended from a string like this. And in our model, supposedly, if we hold the pendulum up to Buzz's face and let go, it will come and smack him in the face. All right, so All right. let's do this. Let's bust this myth. Let's try this out. All right. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Sure you're ready? Yep. Here we go. Oh wait, wait. What? Well, maybe we should ask some teachers what they think about this first before we test it. Let's go yeah. let's go find out what some teachers say. Let's go ask somebody else. Alright. Alright. We'll be right back. Welcome back to our episode of Mythbusters. We have our two guest teachers, uh, Ms. Hacker and Mrs. Martin, to oh. help us try and understand if this situation will happen. So we have this problem that we wonder if you hold a big pendulum up to your face and let go of it and it swings away, we want to know if it will come back and hit you in the face. And we wondered what some teachers thought about that. I don't think that it will <laughs> hit you in the face. Why don't you think it will hit you in the face? Because I think that if it starts here, it's going to, when it goes to that end, it's going to be pretty much equal, but then when it comes back, it's going to be a little bit less because it's going to lose momentum each time. She's oh. really smart. Okay, so, That's you what I get, so it can't <laughs> hit you in the face then, right? Right, that is my hypothesis. Okay. I don't know. I think it depends on how the pendulum is swinging, if it has, how much momentum it has when it starts. That sounds pretty good. So if you just let go of it, will it come back and hit you in the face? No, I think you have to have more force behind it. So you would have to push it. You have to push it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But you would be very confident. We won't make you test it or anything. But <laughs> if, you, if you were to test it with a big object, you would be pretty confident and stand there and let go, and it, you wouldn't even flinch, right? No, I would. I'd probably flinch. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Well, but I don't think it would hit me. Okay. Well, okay. thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. In order to understand. If it is a myth, if a pendulum can swing away and hit you in the face, we need to understand a little bit more about energy, especially the relationship between kinetic energy and gravitational energy. Mr. Bingman, would you like to teach our viewers a little bit about this relationship? I sure could. Let's think about the idea of taking a box and just dropping it. What happens there? Take a box and hold it up in the air and let it go. Pick it up and we drop it again. As it drops to the ground, we need to consider what's going on at different positions during its fall. Up here at the top, where we're holding onto the box, the box has 100% of its energy as gravitational energy. We know that it has gravitational energy because it is above its point of reference. It has height. We know that it does not have any kinetic energy because it is not moving yet. If we imagine a spot just before it hits the floor, we could describe the box as having 100% of its energy as kinetic energy. The box is moving, therefore it has kinetic energy, but it has no room left to fall, so it has no gravitational energy. In the middle, we see that there is an area there where 50% of its energy is kinetic energy and 50% of its energy is gravitational. Shortly after we drop it, we could describe that spot as having 
25% kinetic energy and 75% kinetic gravitational energy. And finally, if we looked at it three quarters of the way down, we would know that it had three quarters of its energy as kinetic and a quarter of its energy as gravitational. What this illustrates is that the gravitational energy the box starts with is the energy that becomes the kinetic energy as it falls. The energy is transferred or converted from gravitational to kinetic during the course of the fall. All of the energy that it has at the end is the energy that it started with, just in a different form. Okay, so now we understand why kinetic energy converts into gravitational energy. But that's only when a box falls straight to the ground. A pendulum doesn't really just fall to the ground. It falls, but then it moves back up again, and then it falls. So how does this relationship work with a pendulum? Well, let's take a look at that, because it's really not that different. A pendulum is anything swinging back and forth, like a swing in a swing set. If we look at the pendulum, at different points in its swing, we would see different types of energy. At the top of its swing, before it's let go, all of the energy it has is gravitational energy. All of its energy is stored. As we let it go, the energy begins to convert from gravitational energy to kinetic. Halfway down, we can see that half of the energy has converted to kinetic energy, and half is still gravitational. As it gets to the bottom of the swing, the pendulum is moving as fast as it will ever move. At this point, all of the energy is kinetic energy. It has no gravitational energy because it has no height above the reference point. As it begins to swing back up, the energy begins to convert back to gravitational energy, so that halfway up, half of its energy is still kinetic, while half is gravitational. At the top of the swing on the other side, all of the energy is converted back to gravitational energy. As, it, as the pendulum comes to a brief stop up there, there is no kinetic energy. As the pendulum swings back and forth, we can see energy changing back and forth between gravitational energy and kinetic and gravitational again. You know this is good, but you know what would make it better? If we made it bigger. That's right. Instead of 10 grams, we should use like... A whole kilogram. Yeah, exactly. Like, a, like if it, and it might, you know, hurt because it's like the mass of a textbook is one kilogram. I like the way you think. Exactly. All right, let's build a really big model. All right, so here's our big pendulum. Now we need a big buster to test it out on. Yeah, we need to get a dummy going to be the dummy. Apparently, um, we don't have one. Rock, paper, scissors? Rock, paper, scissors. Right. Who's the dummy? All right. Rock, paper, scissors. Oh. Yes. Are you ready? Yeah, I guess. All right, I'll do a countdown for you. All right, here we go. Three, two, one.